Okay, you have this triangle here. And let's draw that out. We know that it is a, it is a right triangle. Points here A, B, C, and then D. Now we know that the length of AB is 10 root 3. And the question is, which of the following statements individually, those just by themselves, provide enough information to determine the area of triangle ABC? So here's triangle ABC, there's that right triangle. So we know that if we can find the length of BC, then we can find the area of this triangle because base and the height always meet at a right triangle. Or if we can figure out what is the length of AC, then using the Pythagorean theorem, we can find the length of BC and also find the area. So those are two important things to know before we tackle this problem. So let's start off with A. A says that DBC is an equilateral triangle. Does that help us out? Well, if BCD or DBC is an equilateral triangle, each angle here is equal to 60 degrees. And if this here is 60, I'm focusing on this angle now, this angle over here must be 30. And how do I know that? Well, this is 90, this is 60, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And using the ratios, we can find BC. We don't actually have to find the ratio and find the area, we simply want to know which statement is sufficient. And sufficient A is sufficient. So let's move on to B. ABD is an isosceles triangle. So what I want to do is I want to show you that you can take this triangle here and you can change the way it's drawn as long as you don't break some fundamental rules. For instance, in the previous answer choice, which was A, had we just come in here and started moving the triangle around, we would have changed the 60 degree measure. So we weren't able to do that, but it didn't matter anyway because we could use simple or straightforward rules of 30, 60, 90 to find the answer or to determine whether or not it was sufficient. However, with B, with this isosceles triangle, we could also draw it like this. Isosceles, again, means two sides are equal. So imagine that BD comes down like this and AD comes down like that. This here is still a right triangle and I would draw it now like this. It has shrunk. However, I could take BD, bring it out a little bit more, original triangle right here, and now we have an isosceles as well. Right triangle, st right angle, still there. So you can see I've made now a skinnier triangle versus this bigger triangle. So it could be either or, so this is not sufficient. Then we go to C, the length of BC is equal to the length of AD. So here's BC, here is AD. Again, though, if you look, just look at this triangle over here, you can see, well, we could make BC equal to AD. I'll come over here with it. Or we can make it much larger. BC is now equal to AD. And you have two possible triangles, or many possible triangles. And so C is not sufficient. Then we have D, which is BC is 10. And if BC is 10, remember that was one of the requirements we talked about in the beginning. If we know BC, we can figure out the area. So this is definitely good. Then we have the length of AD is 10. So here's AD. AD is 10. Now, what can we glean or gather from that? Can we figure out what AC is? Well, if I move this over like this, AD is now 10. What happens here? Well, we don't really know what this is because if we knew that D was the midpoint, then we could figure out AC. But D can shift from here to here to here. It doesn't really matter. And so you have that ambiguity, and so you can see that uh, that's not sufficient. So we get rid of E, and just like that, the answers are A and D.